Okay, so today we're going to get into replacing the, the lower springs. I'm going to put some two inch drop springs on it. Um, you see the front, we got quite a bit of gap there. Whereas the back, we've already lowered it three inches. The wheel tucks in there pretty nice. I kind of like the look of it. So now we'll try and get some more of that back up front with some two inch drop springs. And I think I'm going to take this opportunity to replace a ball joint as well. And maybe the tie rods if I can locate them. I know I got them somewhere. Um, so if you're looking for a video for just the ball joints, we'll have that. And maybe I'll do this one. I'll do it all inclusive. We'll see. But for sure, this is going to be the drop springs. Uh, imagine the title will tell you what we're doing. Anyway, so what I did is I, I marked down our, our current height which is 30 inches from the ground to top of this fender or I guess the bottom of the fender right in the center here now that might change depending on what size tires you have but that's with my tires my truck my garage that's what I got right now so I'm hoping when I put in the new CPP springs that number should drop by two inches on the other side it measures out at 29 and a half I don't know if I got a broken spring if I've got um, uh, just a sagged out spring. I don't know. It could be the tires low on air. Regardless, those are my measurements. They were, they're not going to change until I do something about it. So there's where we're at. Back, back's looking just like I want it. Front's pretty gappy. Well, it's not easy to see with that black fender and the, the black gap and the black tire, but she's gappy. In fact, I'd like to drop it a lot more but this is what i got right now maybe we'll do a spindle kit next we'll see uh i don't currently have one so we'll get started when we come back likely i'll have the other side already done that side's so tight it's not really good for you know <laughs> any video footage so i'll probably do that side first just to get it out of the way and then when i come back We'll tackle this side. I will have it up on jack stands. I'll have the wheels off. And then I'll, I'll walk through the process of removing and replacing the ball joints and the springs, etc., etc. All right, hang tight. Okay. So we got it ready to go here. Um, I'm probably going to put you into fast forward or time lapse or something no sense you watching me struggle with these bolts live um, but I will leave it on um, so the first one that we're going to take off will be the tie rod I like to take the tie rod off uh, just so I can swivel things around it makes makes life a whole lot easier so we have our our tie rod is going to be uh, what do we got here? 11 sixteenths. And then our upper ball joint is three quarter. And then the lower ball joint on, on this truck at least is a 15 sixteenths. And this again is my 66 Chevy short box step side. So it's a C10 half ton. So I'm going to get started. I'm going to rip off these cotter pins and then I'll pull off the, the nuts. And then we'll get going. So I'm also going to utilize this ammo box. And what I'll do is I'll take that spindle assembly, the brake assembly off, and I'll just I'll just set it on there, out of the way, do my ball joints, swap out the spring, and then set it back up. And that way I just don't have to bleed the brakes and all the rest of it. Although Look at that brake line. It's actually sitting in the spring. So yeah, we'll have to get that straightened out. Anyway, uh, I'll get you set up and we'll get you on.
Okay, so we got a small cup up here, the large spacer here, and the small cup down here. I'll go. I'll bring you through all that once we get her apart here. You know what? I'm just gonna put a little bit of a little bit of liquid wrench in here. Certainly can't hurt anything. She's coming. Some guys like to use an impact for this. I just, I don't feel a need to. That always comes out pretty good. So this is what we had in there. So this is the, the lower ball joint. So what we had was we had this cup, which is bigger than the ball joint. So it, it sits underneath here, right? Like this. So that when we push it through, we, we push it through the cup. So on the bottom, we had this guy and it just kind of sat in there and held the cup for the ball joint to push it into. Does that make sense? I think so. We're done with that now. And up top, what I'd done, I just took this guy. It's all full of grease now. Just took this guy, nothing fancy. And just stuck them on like that and pushed it through like that. So this was the top, slipped through like that. And then the cup went around the bottom and we just pushed it right through. Does that make sense? I hope so. So anyway, that guy's out. We're gonna put a new one in. In fact, this wasn't even a bad ball joint. I just, I just feel like, you know, for the price of ball joints. We're this deep anyway to do the springs. Like, why not? Ball joints for these trucks, super cheap. So why wouldn't you do it? Okay, so now we'll move on to the upper ball joint. This guy's a little more involved. Let's see. I can get you a better angle. Let's see what I can do for you.
Alright, quick recap here before the, before the battery went dead. So this guy, this is our upper. It just, just falls into place here. Um, it literally just drops in like that. And then our, our four bolts go up to the bottom. We'll have to tighten those up yet. Um, down below here, that was up here. I hope you've seen that. Let me start that again. So this is our upper ball joint. This is our old one. So it literally just, just slips into place like that. And then the four bolts go up from underneath. Very simple. And then down here, I'm not exactly sure when that battery went dead, but there's our lower ball joint installed. Um, what we did is we used this cone on the bottom for that ball joint. And that sat up against the bottom there. And then we used uh, this one and this spacer on the top, just like that. And then the, then the, the, the clamp came through it. So that's all done now. Um, I'll get this tightened up. And then we'll look at uh, throwing the coil in, I guess. And getting this thing buttoned back up. And tight. Well, there you have it. <laughs> I wish I could, uh, <laughs> wish I could be happier about this, but the reality is I put my two inch Lord springs on and it measures out exactly a quarter of an inch lower than what it was. Will it settle out? I don't know. Maybe were my original springs kind of worn out? Yeah, possibly. In fact, likely <laughs> um something to keep in mind i guess going forward anyway here we are not much of a change maybe a quarter of an inch right now uh maybe we'll take it for a drive and see if it settles and report back on that uh, for the time being the back looks lower than the front and there's not a lot i can do about that so there you have it end of story 
Uh, coil springs are in, new ball joints are in, upper and lower. New shocks are in, I put the new shocks in there, lowering shocks. Just in case anybody thinks that's what's standing it up, it's not. Um, they're actually for a two inch lower ride. So let's, let's hope that's okay too. At any rate, that uh, about wraps this one up. So there you go, you got new ball joints, you got uh, new shocks, and you got new coil springs.